Hi, my name is Creston, and I'm going to show you how to set up a Ruby on Rails development environment on Ubuntu 14.04. So the first question you may be asking is, why Ubuntu? So I use it because I use Ubuntu in my production environment. I use Ubuntu Server, so you may want to match your development environment with your production environment. Another reason why you may want to choose Ubuntu to do Ruby on Rails development is maybe you're using Windows. I tend to use Windows. I do not have a Mac, um, but it's very difficult to do Ruby on Rails development on Windows, or you have to jump through more hoops. So I tend to use, uh, like to use a Linux distribution like Ubuntu. So these are the steps that we're going to go through to set up Ruby on Rails in our uh, Ubuntu environment. First, we need to install the package prerequisites for Ruby on Rails. Next, we're going to install the latest version of Ruby, and we're going to use a tool to help manage multiple Ruby versions. We'll then install Ruby on Rails, configure a Postgres, Postgres database, and then lastly, uh, create your first Ruby on Rails application. So the first thing we're going to do is install the Ubuntu packages that we need. We're going to install Git Core uh, and Build Essential. So Git Core is going to be used to download some software that we need to install to manage the Ruby versions. We're going to install Node.js because Ruby on Rails needs a JavaScript runtime. We're going to install SQLite 3 and a development library for it. However, we're not going to use it in this tutorial, um, but this is considered the default um, database that Rails tends to use unless you specify a different one. We're actually going to be using Postgres for our database, and it's the database that I tend to use for all of my projects. And then lastly, we're, we're going to be installing a number of the other libraries that you see right here. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So I'm at the command line. We're going to do the entire installation from the command line. So I'm going to paste a single command, a sudo apt get, and I'm going to install all the different packages that you just saw. So I'll go ahead and pause it while that installation takes place. Okay, the installation is complete, and now the next thing we want to do is to install Ruby. So before we install Ruby, we're going to use actually a tool to help manage different Ruby versions, because as you're doing development, you may want to, you may have different applications that have different Ruby versions. So there are three tools that are, tend to be used today. One is RVM, the other is RBM, and then uh, CHRuby. We're going to use RBM. And we're also going to be, so RBM is going to install, manage our Ruby versions, but Ruby build is actually builds the Ruby versions that we're going to be using. Okay, let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to go ahead and paste this um, git clone command. So it's going to clone uh, RPM into the .rvm directory under my home directory. The next step that we need to do is that we need to add two commands to our bashrc file to get rvm working properly. So we're going to export a path and then insert this uh, eval statement. Once that's done, we need to execute our bashrc file again, and we can do that using um, this command here, exec shell. All right, now that that's done, we also want to install Ruby build. And to do that, we use the same type of uh, clone command that we used before. And that installs it to a subdirectory within RBM under plugins. So once that is done, we should be able to do an rvm install hyphen l to see a list of Ruby versions that are available for installation. And if we scroll up here, we can see oops, uh, Ruby 2.1.4. So we're going to go ahead and install that particular Ruby version.
So how you install that particular version is you, you just do rbm then install and say 2.1.4. Now the installation will take a bit of time so I'm going to pause the video while it finishes. Okay, the installation is finished and now what we want to do is we want to set this version of Ruby to be our global version and you can do that easily just doing rbm global 2.1.4, the version that we just installed. So now in every directory that will be the default version unless there's some local change. The next step that we want to do is we want to do rbm rehash because rbm create shims for the different executables and that's how it switches based upon the directory you're in to decide what Ruby version uh, that it's going to be using. So once we've done that we can go ahead and do a Ruby version and we should see 2.1.4 exactly the version we expect. Okay so the next thing we want to discuss are Ruby gems. So Ruby gems it's a package manager for Ruby code. Um, it's the standard format for distributing Ruby, distributing Ruby code as gems. Um, it also handles installation dependencies. So if your Ruby gem requires some other gems, it will install them automatically for you. Um, so what we're going to do, because Rails will be installed as a gem, we're going to just do one quick configuration change uh, before we actually go ahead and install Rails. So we're going to go back to the command line and I'm going to paste this command. What this says is just don't install uh, two different forms of documentation um, when you're installing gems. And you do that um, in a hidden gemrc file in your home directory. So once that's done, we're now ready to install Ruby on Rails. To do that, we're going to just do gem install Rails. Now while that runs, I'm going to go ahead and pause the video. Okay, the installation is finished. You can see that 23 gems were installed. So it installed Rails and then all the other uh, gems that Rails is dependent upon. So the next thing we want to do is we want to do another RBM rehash to shim the, shim the executables for the executables for this Ruby version. The next step is to do our Postgres configuration. So to do that, we're just going to use the following command. It's going to create a user or a role in Postgres called Creston. It's going to make it a super user. And this command just tells it to run this create user command as the Postgres user. So that user role should now be created. Now we're ready to create our first Rails application. So we're going to create a directory for applications. We're going to cd into that directory. Now we're going to do Rails new test app. And we're going to specify the database to be Postgres SQL. So now it's creating all the different files that Rails requires and this bundle install command is actually installing gems that are necessary for this particular application. Okay, the installation has finished. Now we're going to cd into the directory of the application that we created and then we're going to run a rake task. And that task is going to create the database that we need, a development database, as well as do migration, although at this point uh, there's no data to migrate. So after that's run, the database should be created, and then we should be able to start up Rails at this point. So I'm going to do uh, bin Rails S. Now this means server, so start the Rails server, so you could type server if you wanted. Okay, so this has started Webbrick, which is the default um, web application server for Ruby, and it's installed, it set it up on localhost 3000. So now if we go to our web browser and go to localhost 3000, 
we should see your Rails welcome page. If we click on Applications Environment, we should see should see it says 4.1.6. So we've now success and it also says the Ruby version 2.1.4. So we have successfully set up a Ruby on Rails development environment in Ubuntu 14.04. Thank you for watching. Uh, please subscribe to learn more. We're actually going to be releasing more videos about server deployment, so deploying your Ruby on Rails applications to a server. So uh, please subscribe to uh, learn more about that. Thank you.